If you'd like to learn how to make a sliding door that moves up when the player touches it and then goes back down again, keep watching and I'll show you exactly how to do it. Welcome to Roblox Snippets. Alright, to make the uh, sliding door example at the beginning of the video, we're going to create a couple of parts in the workspace. So come up to Home and then over to Part. And we'll change the name of this part straight away to Frame Part. And then down in its properties, we'll come down and change its size. So we'll make it the size 1 by 10 by 1. And then use the Move tool and just bring it up so that it's, you know, just near level with the base plate. Okay. And the last thing we'll do for a start is to come down and change it to Anchored so that it stays where it is in the workspace. Now you can come up if you like and change its brick color. Say uh, you wanted to make this like a wall that you're going to attach things to. So pick a color and we might make this bricks. So up the top, like so. So we've got like a brick post. All right, now the other part we need is the door. So what we'll do is just take the frame part and right click on it and click duplicate and then just drag it over to the right slightly and we'll change the name of the dragged part to be door part and we'll change uh, the brick color so that it's, it's different so just pick something um, I'm going to pick uh, like this fossil color and we'll change this to be a, a diamond plate like in the, the beginning and then scroll down and we'll change the the size simply change the x value to 4 and we've got a, a door that's going to slide all right now the only other important thing to do with this part is to scroll down to the anchor and we want to uncheck anchor okay because this is the moving part that's going to move up and down and we don't want it anchored so uh, we want it to be able to move freely so if you've got both of these the next thing that we're going to do is create two attachments one in the door and one in the frame so over here click on the frame part and next to it click on the plus and in the search box start typing attachment so ATT when you see attachment left click on it click on the name of the attachment and if you click again at the very end add a zero okay so not a little O or a capital O it has to be a zero the number zero and then enter and on the door part so click on it, we'll do the same thing, click on the plus, attachment, add an attachment, and at the end of this one, we'll add the number 1. Alright, so with both of these, so we can see what's happening, uh, on the attachment 0, in the, its properties, up the very top, you'll see visible. So just go ahead and left click on visible, and do the same thing for visible in the door part as well. Now we're going to, these two attachments uh, will sort of work together and the way that we connect those, we're going to use a thing called the prismatic constraint and we'll add that to our frame part. So click on the frame part and then click on the plus and in here start typing P-R-I and you should get prismatic constraint. So go ahead and click on that and that will be added into the frame part. So now that we have this prismatic constraint if we left click on it we want to uh, add in these two attachments to this so that this is the thing that's controlling uh, these two here so if you've clicked on prismatic constraint uh, you can click on visible all right because we want it we want to see everything and see how everything's working and then scroll down slowly through the properties till you find attachments and you'll see attachment 0 and attachment 1 with an empty box next to them. So in the empty box next to 0, left click in there and you should see this Lego cursor appear. Come up and click on attachment 0. And then we'll do the same thing for attachment 1 down here. So attachment 1 in the empty box and click on attachment 1. And you should see both parts get highlighted in green. And if I just zoom in a little bit a bit touchy you'll see both parts are highlighted in green with this green line going between them 
All right, so that green line going between them represents the attachment between, or the line going between these two attachments. So they're working together. Now we're going to need to move these attachments. So remember we're making this door move up and down. And we want to make it move from the bottom, not from the middle where the attachments have been added. So what we're going to do is left click on attachment zero and then using command or control, select the other attachment as well. So you've got both. Now, if uh, you're not comfortable moving both these, you can do them individually. Click on the move tool and we're going to move these down to the bottom of our parts. All right. So once you've moved them down close to the bottom, like so, you'll see this yellow one over here for our frame part. It's uh, just so that it's sitting, you know, level with the bottom there. We want to grab the attachment one here in the door and move it over so that it's protruding out like this. All right, now before we move on, if I left click now on the prismatic constraint, you'll see we have our, our green lines and if you look up here uh, what we want to do is make this one move up to the top and we're going to change some settings in here and that'll help us understand uh, how this will work but if we look at our attachments currently they're facing this way that yellow line or where the orange is here uh, or the yellow line sorry is the direction so at the moment it's going to move left and right so we need to rotate both of these so that the orange line, uh, orange arrow, which is a bit hard to see if I move in closer, there it is, just in here, uh, there we go, that orange arrow there, what we want to do is rotate it so that it's pointing out to the left. So left click on rotate and in model, click on the rotate if it's not already checked and change this to be 90. So we rotate 90 degrees. And then we're going to rotate so that the orange arrow is pointing left. We'll also do this in the door part. So click on attachment one and rotate it so that the orange arrow is pointing left. Now if we click on the prismatic constraint, you should see something like this with a red line going in between these two attachments. All right, coming back to the frame part again, the last thing we'll do is to click on the move tool and move it over so that it's about halfway out of the part, uh, like so. And I'll just hold down shift and move over a little bit. And the same with the door part here. We'll just move this one out as well so it's about halfway out. Okay, so it should look something like that. It's a little bit hard to move uh, smoothly here. I'm just holding down shift to try and get a nice view for you. Something like that. Now you might notice that this one is a bit smaller than this one so don't worry about that too much. As long as they look like this and when we click on the prismatic constraint you have this red line and these two uh, green dots. Now what we'll do is we'll set some of the properties in the prismatic constraint itself. So if we scroll down past where we had our attachments you'll find here a section that says slider so we're going to change this actuator type here now it says none left click on that to the drop down and choose servo and you'll get these numbers that appear in here and just below that you'll also find a checkbox called limits enabled so go ahead and left -click, click on that and it will also give us some boxes up here that we can work with now in the servo, we'll use the, uh, the numbers that I've set at the moment, but you can have a play around with them later. So in the max force, we're going to add 10, uh, 100,000. So 1 with 1, 0, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and 100,000. So five zeros. In the speed, we'll set this to 10. And the target we're going to leave at 0. All right, now... Coming up to the limits up here, if we have a look in here, our upper limit at the moment is set to 5. Now, if we just uh, move this up, you'll see this green ball here. That's 5, which is half the height of this. Remember that it's 10. So what we'll do is we'll change our upper limit to be 10, and that green ball will move up to the top of that part. So this is the height limit that this part can move up to. And now if we set our lower limit 
down here. Our lower limit currently is zero, and that is where the constraint is sitting. Now, one thing about these constraints is that when you are working with them, um, it's very easy uh, for the part to move past whatever the limits are if you're not careful, and if that happens, then it will stop working. So we want the part to move back to zero, but we want the lowest limit to be a bit less than that. So what we'll do is change this to be minus one. And you'll see that little green ball went down under the ground, but we're still sitting at zero, okay? So we're working within the limits, not to the limits. That's the important thing to remember. Now, once you have this in place, we have enough in here now to add some code to make this work. So click on the frame part, and then we're going to click on the plus and add a script. All right, we can change this to be called our door script and come into the script and we will add a couple of variables. Go okay, the first one will be the frame, which will be script.parent. So that's where our script is. And then we want one for the prismatic constraint. So we'll say local pris equals and it's in the frame so we can use that variable dot prismatic oops prismatic constraint then we want one for the door part so door which is game dot workspace dot door part and you could put these in a model if you wanted to but we'll just this is just an example and the last one we'll work with will be a db or a debounce value to control our script and that's all of the variables that we need so we're going to make this work by when the player touches the door, we're going to make it open and then close. So we need a touched event. So door, and when it is, so we put door dot touched. So that's the event. And when that event is triggered, we want to connect. So we put a colon, connect, a function, and then a set of brackets. And we're going to add a parameter called hit. And this represents which part of the character is hitting the door like their head or their foot which is a part of their character move outside and hit enter and it should look like that now now we don't really need the character for this uh, but we're going to check the player so we create a variable called player or plr for short equals game dot players and then colon and get player from character and inside of here we'll put hit dot parent Okay, and move outside and I'll just get rid of those boxes so this means when it gets to this line whichever part as I said hit the door could be their foot or their head of the character get player from character so hit dot parent will represent the character so that's this part and then we take that character and we look in all the players in the game and we match them up and when it finds one it says okay that must be the player and it puts it over here Right, so with that information we can create a conditional statement. So if it is a player and db, so if db is true, all right, it's always checking in here if it's these two things are true, we can run this code inside here. So the first thing we want to do is set db to be false. And then towards the end of the script, we're going to say task.wait of say a second, and we will set db back to true. And what this effectively does is says uh, we're going to allow when a player touches the door we're going to allow this code in between to run every second all right and now we can make the door go up and down and it's pretty simple so we take the prismatic constraint and we are changing its property of the target position and this is in studs equal to now remember if we have a quick look here we're starting at the bottom and the number of studs up to the top and we set the limit at 10 at the top up here so we want to go a little bit less than that so let's say we say 9.5 okay so that's the target position when it first starts to move then we'll, when it gets to the top we want it to wait briefly say three seconds and then we can say prismatic constraint and its target position then will equal zero because we want it to come back to where it was and that is part of the reason if we have a look at our right, come back over here that is part of the reason why we set 
this limit below the ground because we want it we want it to come back to zero but not go beyond that limit okay now with that information there we are ready to give it a test so click on file and save and let's play all right i'm all loaded in and what you should notice is if your door wasn't um complete if it was moved over here it snapped to this position here so that the two um, if i zoom in a bit the two attachments are now aligned over the top of one another so if we test this now so run up and touch the door it should slide up to the top and i can run through and then after a few seconds it slides smoothly back to the bottom all right and that should happen over and over again so I hope you found that video useful and you enjoyed that and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. If you found this video useful, subscribe now. For more information about my online courses, go to mrbrendanross.com.